Alright everyone, here we go, we're about to get started, twitch.tv.filibusterfox, I mean twitch.tv slash filibusterfox is now live, that's right, filibusterfox, that's me, hosting League of Legends live, it's 9pm Pacific, midnight Eastern, every night, at twitch.tv slash filibusterfox. Just announcing to Twitter, there we go. Alright. We're going to get right into it today here, and we're not going to wait for anyone to tune in who isn't ready yet. We're on time, we're ready to go, and today's theme is mid lane. That's right, the mid lane. I've talked about top, I've talked about the jungle, I've talked about support and warding to an extent. In AD carry, there's really not much talked about except last hitting and not dying. Positioning kind of is the big one there. But today, I'm going to focus on mid lane. We're going to look at the position, uh, the situations that mid lanes are going to generally find themselves in, what they're going to have to do to get ahead in the lane, what that lane is responsible for during the course of a game, and so on and so forth. Mid lane is the key today. So I'm going to look to see if we've got a fairly early spectate match. Oh, there's one. Bam. Here we go. Right into a game here. Yellow shirt. Yeah, uh... Yeah, see if you cut the uh, little bit of a notice there. Mm-hmm, yellow shirt. I, it was one of my few long sleeve shirts I have. It's a little chilly today, so I had to be Captain Kirk today. That's right, Captain Filibuster Fox of the Starship Twitch TV slots. Filibuster Fox. All right, we're going right in. Uh, and to this, one kill one kill match both teams at the same amount of gold four minutes and 17 seconds in in the mid lane we have twisted fate and we have oriana and we are not going to care about the rest of the game at all these two are the ones we're going to watch we look at them at the situation we're coming into neither of them have any kills deaths nor assists oriana has 24 farm to twisted fate's 25 nocturne is ganking oriana and they may be able to do some damage here if that fear goes off but oh she's gonna have the shield ready oh and the counter gank by vi completely shutting down nocturne from any attempt to kill there. A little bit of a speed boost on Vi there. Is it going to be enough for the kill? No, the stun goes down. Oh, that auto attack bringing him down to five hit points. Twisted Fate's so lucky. But we're not here for commentary. That is not what we're doing today. We're not just commentating random matches. We are watching this mid lane. This is the focus of our attention. So you know what that means, right? We have to only look at the mid lane, right? That's how mid works, right? No, that's not how mid works. Mid is important because of the centralized location of the map. Sure, the jungler is going all over the map, and constantly you're unable to predict where he's going to go next unless you have good warding, and you know you track his jungle timers, stuff like that. If you're aware of his location, then you can predict it. But in general, the strength of the jungler ganks is that you don't really know when they're going to come or where they're going to come from. The mid lane is similar in that. It's centralized location, so it can help either top, bot lane, or the jungler. In fact, mostly, if there's going to be a fight in the jungle, it's going to be mid and jungle, not jungle in another lane. Mostly mid and jungle. Those are the guys who are going to get into this fight here. So you're going to follow Oriana for a bit while I talk about the mid lane. Mid lane's big strength is having characters who can do lots of damage and get the kills, have good crowd control so they can allow the uh, junglers, unless the jungler has high crowd control, one of the other needs crowd control so they can work together on the ganks in the mid lane and ensure that they get the kills there. Once they get the opportunity to be mobile, they need to start ganking other lanes and project map control. They either need to start controlling the enemy's jungle, take both wraith camps perhaps, something like that, get some ward coverage, for example, if you're red, right here, get a ward there, get a ward over here, or maybe here, so you can see them coming behind you. That way you can't get ganked, and you have vision. Whenever you see the jungle going somewhere, you can either go counter gank, you can gank somewhere else, or you can just keep pushing your lane. Now, there's some very specific champions I want to mention right now about midline. Pantheon and Twisted Fate. Both of these champions, and to a lesser extent, Kassadin and Ari, are very mobile and able to get out of their lane quickly. Oriana also has a speed boost. She's good for that as well. That extra mobility they have, either with the ultimates for Twisted Fate or uh, for Pantheon, to just instantly jump down from about halfway from the jungle or even all the way through the lane to the lane they're wanting to gank, allow them to project their power without actually having to leave that far. Other mid laners are still able to uh, gank the other lanes, but they have to walk a bit further to do that, and it takes more time. That time they're out, they're not getting farm, they're falling behind potentially. Oh, here comes Swiss Fate, just as I'm saying, here he goes. He pushed out his lane, and then he ganked bot. Well, he attempted to gank bot. He didn't do a very good job there. He just teleported to an empty lane, 
and they walked away. Meanwhile, Oriana's just farming, having the advantage of being like, okay, Twist of Fate, you go ahead and use your ult and go over there. I'll just keep pushing up and farming. Go take a uh, Wraith, maybe, Oriana? Oh, no, Blue's buffs up. Never mind. Take Blue buff. Jungler just waiting patiently, getting kicked in the face. Yep. Now, uh, as I was saying, mid's important role is that mobility that they can get to top or bot or the jungle to help in any fights that occur and to be it that surprise gang. A lot of lower elo players just expect mid to sit in lane and farm and farm. You know, like Anivia, farm mid, farm raise, farm those raise, farm mid again. Anivia is one of the farming champs. She's not that mobile, she's pretty slow, but she still has the potential to go down to, say, bot lane or top lane, hit that stun, and do a lot of damage very quickly. So, with that in mind, that is the goal of the mid lane. You need to be able to farm up, you need to be able to deal damage, or in some way ensure that your team is getting kills, either by doing the damage or doing enough CC, much like Orianna, who also does damage as well as CC, in order to actually secure kills, whether for herself, or for the jungler, or for the lane she's ganking, however it is, doesn't matter. You've got to keep the pressure to keep the other mid laner at their tower, and whenever you're pushing them to the tower, if they're being timid about pushing out, they won't push out, you got them scared and hiding under the tower, that's your opportunity to just abandon the lane and go somewhere else for a kill. Or, you know, wait for your jungler to come in and kill Twisted Fate. That works too. So, that all said, that is the basics of mid lane. Exact matchups, champion choices, such like that is all team and opponent dependent, especially in draft for opponent, and blind is not so much. But uh, getting good synergy with your teammates is important for picking your mid lane. For example, if your jungler is very mana dependent, uh, we'll use uh, Vi as the more appropriate of the two junglers example, she generally benefits a little more from blue buff than Nocturne does. Uh, having a mid champion who doesn't need blue that much, like Katarina, or uh, maybe Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath, I always love having blue, but I can get away without it if I'm kind of conservative. Twist of Fate, once again, projecting that mobility into bot lane. Oriana taking the advantage since he, since he can't get there to help. She's going to push up and try to take that mid tower. We don't need to see the fight. Here's Oriana. They're succeeding in the fight. They had four versus two down there. A lot of global presence. But for those two kills, they're losing a tower. Alright, they should be the tower here. They're not going to be able to get there in time. Vi picking up a kill in return. That's kind of nice. The mid laner at that, so he's definitely not going to get there in time. Vi picking up the kill top helps out quite a bit there. So Ariana doing the correct thing and taking them on this tower to punish that Twisted Fate for leaving lane. And hey, now that she's punished Twisted Fate and taken the tower, she can go gank bot lane, although she's going to walk past a ward to do it. And Vi is too low and the rest of Blue isn't really there to help. But she can at least scare them back away from the tower to keep them from killing it. We're diving this Vi. She can't delay for too long here, so she's going to take the opportunity to go B to go back to mid lane. Because if she stays gone for too long, well, Nocturne and Twisted Fate will be like, Okay, you take my tower, I'll take yours back. So she did a very good job. Both her and Twisted Fate did excellent jobs of demonstrating what a mid lane should be doing in the laning phase. You should either be ganking other lanes or taking advantage when your opponent does. If your opponent is not leaving to gank lanes and they're just hugging their tower, go gank a lane. If they're pushing aggressively, well you need to push them back and see if you can bully them. If they keep pushing up, get the jungler to come in, go for a gank. Once they're killed, either push up and take the tower or go more likely than pushing the tower. You want to take that advantage when they go to gank. But you if you kill the enemy, uh, enemy mid in a gank, you want to send your mid to either the top or bot lane or something to go for a kill. Since you've got the advantage, you can take that time to be mobile since the enemy will not push up on your tower. Once they come back, you get back to lane, continue with your farming, and uh, if they're aggressive again, repeat the process gank. If they're defensive and stuck the tower, push them up and then go gank uh, another lane. Or if... Uh, they leave, then you take their tower. That's as simple as it is. There are two options when they leave. You follow them and make it a 3v3 in bot lane or whatever, or you take their tower. Both are good options. 
They're both situational options as well. But yeah, let's go ahead and hop into a different mid-game. I'll take some questions from the chat if there are any. We're just... Uh, that was just a quick discussion on what the mid lane is really all about. I didn't really want to discuss, oh yeah, you should have an AP carry mid, because that's not all the case. Pantheon, Lee Sin, uh, Avai, all very strong non-AP carry mids. So, uh, anyone in the uh, chat have any quick questions or any comments about how the mid lane works here? We'll switch back over to my camera here. As we start looking for a new match. Oh, a couple just getting started here. It's good. We'll go into this one. Watch now. Back to the spectate cam. Okay, no questions were forthcoming in time. So we're going to go right into the next match and observe these mid laners and see how they start through the laning phase. We're going to miss that initial jungle invade, counter invade, and all that nonsense, but that's not what we're worried about. In this one, we're going to have an Anivia, Team Spirit Anivia. Awesome. I like that. So Against uh, so Ari. Now, as we're coming in, Nivia has one kill, one assist. Ari has one death. And uh, basically the same farm as Nivia. She will once she kills these two. So, nivia has got the slight advantage here. So she's going to be a little ahead in this situation. That's pretty much irrelevant for what we're going to be talking about, though. We're going to have a look at what I was talking about in mobility and pressure from the mid lane. Now, having a look, Nivia, did you buy any wards? No, you didn't. Ari, do you have any wards? You have a ward. Good, Ari. Yay, you get a smiley face from my mouse cursor. Yeah, look at that. I, I, smile. Anivia, coming back to lane to farm. She's going very sustainy, so she can sit here and farm as much as she needs. Get that Rod of Ages up. Maybe a flask later. <laughs> I want that skin. Why don't I have that skin? Stupid limited time skins that I don't actually have access to anymore. He's in very low top. The Sejuani very able to kill him if she wants to. Here it goes. Q. Are you going to save your Q to get out? No? Uh, Sejuani. Kill him. There we go. <laughs> Took a little long there. He managed to burst her down in response, but that was fine. Tanking the minions took too much out of her. But that's not mid lane. We're looking at mid lane here. Okay, so Anivia's 39 farm. Ari's at 35. So Anivia is still slightly ahead farm-wise. Ari, once again, she placed her ward right here. Pretty good spot for a ward. There are a couple options. I prefer the slightly more aggressive towards the raid ward, uh, towards the wraith warding. That gives you a little more advantage of seeing the jungler's timing, keeping an eye on the rays, being able to steal them if you so choose, or being able to spot Anivia when she more likely goes for them, because Anivia should really just be farming those raids constantly. And that is what she does best. Ari does not want to get in a farm fight with Anivia here. She will lose the farm. Anivia will always out-farm Ari as long as they are uh, both good. And Anivia is taking rays. Anivia, why aren't you taking rays? Well, they're not there now, but in general. Jack's looking like he wants to gank mid. Now, we're seeing an advantage in map control to Ari here, actually, because she actually did ward the river. So Juani trying to uh, steal a blue buff here. Oh, manages to pick it off here, but is she going to get caught and killed in response? Scarner level 4 against the level 6 Sejuani. Ari coming in, completely missing the charm, getting ulted in the face, and here's Lux with the snare. Ari's going to die here very quickly. Ari made the right decision to come fight this, but Scarner, why are you so far behind? What's going on, Scarner? There's no uh, bot lane to really help them there. Perhaps fighting there was a bad idea, but going to assist was certainly not. Once again, mobility and pressure is the key for mid lane. Sure, racking up a so huge kill count is a wonderful so thing and makes you powerful in late game, but your map control and your objective control is what makes you win. Already taking way too much tower there. But so hey, yummy. she has an egg. It's so fine. So Ari trying to get so there in time yummy. to make this Ari, uh, this Anivia regret having to use her egg. But Ari was too late. Anivia now 2 0 1 with 57 farm to Ari 2 0 2 with 50 farm. Ari falling way behind now. 
I'm waiting to see them start roaming at all. Ari should really be the one who's roaming. She's level 6. She's got that mobility. She can jump in the gank. Here we go. Come on, Ari. You can do it. Let's go for the gank in bot lane. They're pushed up. They're vulnerable. No, you're just warding raids. I like where you put that. I really do. But why aren't you ganking this? Why, why is there no gank happening here? Look how pushed up they are, Ari. Are you trying to pressure the tower? No, you're not. You're just farming. You don't need to just be farming against Nivy. You, you should have gone bot to gank here, Ari. Ari, why? Now she's going to have to help Skarner in the jungle again. Now, still two levels behind his opponent. Finally actually getting the buff in the fight there. And Nivia not far behind, but not close enough to really help to get in range here. Although Sejuani is just killing Skarner. And now Ari is going to die for having help with really low level Skarner. Once again, not... <laughs> Once again, she should have gone and helped there. But that Skarner is just so far behind. He's just ruining her day. It's poor Ari falling behind now as a result of it. This is not going to be good for her. Her only chance to really catch up at this point is not to stick around with the Nivea and farm and lose the farm game. It's to gank a lame. And Nivea, however, is doing the right thing. She's waiting for Ari to move out of position before she does. She has the farming advantage. She's just going to take the minions as much as she wants. She should be going taking raids. These raids, preferably. But she's not. Again, good war placement for the blue team as well. Warning up towards the raids of the enemy. I much like that mirror there. Also a good spot for a ward. Keeps Anivia pretty safe from the top lane. But yes, this is an example of a game we're not going to learn much from. Because Anivia is just rolling over Ari, and Ari is like, Hey, I'm just going to play the farm game with you. Because that's the only thing I know. Well, Ari, that's not what you should be doing in this situation, to be perfectly frank. Farming is a wonderful thing. I'm always a big fan of anyone who sits and farms when they're behind. But against the Nivea, you're going to stay behind if all you do is sit and farm. There you go. Take the raise. That's what I'm talking about. Take the raise. Get this advantage back. Go take their raise when you can. Don't get caught doing it. That's why you've got the ward there. Maybe you're trying to steal that last raise because they do actually have it warded, but not quite able to. Good attempt, though. But Ari, you finally makes a decision that I'm really, really happy with. I mean, go and help your jungler twice. I like that. But taking those rays, I really like that. That's a good move there. Nice. That was not the best thing I've ever seen there, but that's fine. Amusingly walled by Anivia. Down in the bot lane, uh, Skarner once again ruining everything for his team. Oh, how disappointing Skarner. Ari making a nice job of ganking a lane. That's what I'm talking about, Ari. However, you know, Anivia followed, doing exactly what Anivia should have. Also what I'm talking about, Anivia. Very nicely done. Both of the mids are doing what they should have in that situation. Ari perhaps being a little too late there. All right, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, we've seen what we need to see in that. No reason to draw that out. Blue team is going to win that match, probably. Skarner is just so bad off. He doesn't even look stat-wise that he's that bad off, but he's 40 and 2 deaths, 1 assist to 4 2 4, 44 of, uh, of his opponent, Sejuani. So, what's the next spec? Ooh, one minute. Oh, perfect. This is what I want to see. Watch now. One minute in, this means we are barely going to have to miss any of the early game. What a fantastic opportunity here. We're going to see a Medlux, maybe? Or mid Nidalee? Against a mid Katarina. <laughs> Alright, so what's happened here? Red team got first blood in the jungle invade. Giving them nice early lead. The first blood going to Katarina. Fantastic, Katarina. That's going to make you a very happy camper. The death does go to Poppy. Goldfather 8. Team China with the early lead. Uh, Cho'Gath trying to make this Shaco die. I love it. Very nice, Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath, you... <laughs> 
Oh my god, this Cho'Gath. I'm in love with this Cho'Gath. That was a beautiful thing. And that is why wards are a beautiful thing as well. Katarina against the Neely in mid. That's not really the best matchup for Katarina. Neely, with her sustain, is very good at basically ignoring her bouncing blades over time, and the spears are really hurt if you eat them. But Katarina, you know, it should be a fairly balanced lane. It's not necessarily in huge advantage for either of them. Seeing what's going on down bot, blue team is getting a little beat up there. Katarina, of course, getting some nice farm in with nine of them to Neely's five. Taking a tower hit. Alright, so what we should see from these mids as they start to farm up is Katarina has to do a lot of roaming. She's kind of a snowball champion. She goes to other lanes, she gets lots of kills, and then she just pushes the game and gets penta kills. Neely, on the other hand, is kind of a split pushing champion. If she can poke down Katarina and get her defensive, she can start pushing up and try and take the tower. She's going to be less useful ganking other lanes. She doesn't have any hard CC. Her burst is pretty nice with her spear, but it's not repeatable, so she can't just go in and get like a triple kill very quickly, like Katarina can. Her main advantage is going to be... Oh, hitting those spears, beautiful. Is going to be her pushability. Her pressure is her advantage, kind of like Anivia. If Katarina leaves to go get those kills, then Needly can really push up the tower. This may actually force Katarina to play a little more in her lane. We're going to see how this Katarina decides to do it. Katarina is, of course, at her best when she is killing everyone else. Whether or not the mid lane opponent is dying. But if she loses her tower and immediately just gets to keep farming and split pushing, Neely could be a large problem for the other team. So it's going to be an interesting choice that this Katarina is faced with, and we're going to see how that goes. Up top, Cho with that early blue in a fantastic position, because if there's one thing low level Cho has a disadvantage with, it's mana. And if you have mana, then you have sustain and health as well. And you can bully whatever you please. I love having blue when I'm Cho'Gath is a wonderful thing to get you through those first six levels before you just start auto-sustaining yourself. Cho'Gath pre-6 is pretty actually weak on sustain, all things considered. Once he hits 6, he's very hard to dislodge from a lane, and his mana issues become much smaller, as long as you're not spamming. But that early game, letting you have that mana from which to bully, look at Poppy. She's got 17 farm to chose 29, and she's so very low. Well, she's being very aggressive under the tower there. I like that. See how Mind is doing, though. Neely with a 24 farm to Katarina's 33. Katarina, again, had that early advantage, so she's a pretty big threat to the Neely. Neely having to be a little careful early. But she's quickly coalescing this gap into a much, much less uh, solid substance. I don't know if coalescing was the right word so much as uh, literally any other word I could have used. But, uh... Show having a B. A bit of death going on there. The AD carry for the blue team dying, so advantage for the red team. Katarina already level 6 to Nidalee's 5. She won't be far off from 6. She should get it very soon here. She's only a little behind. Katarina not quite able to address here. There we go. Level 6 Needly. She's able to really start pushing now. With Team China against Team South Korea, apparently. I'm um, a little wondering about that. But that's okay. We have a history feature in Jarvan to uh, help us figure that out. Okay. Now here's Needly's chance. Katarina wants to go B. Very clearly wants to go B. Neely has to keep her in lane, prevent her from doing what she wants to do. As this sort of matchup, where Katarina's goal is to get kills in other places and be as aggressive as possible, if you basically just want to deny her from whatever she wants to do. You do that and you're succeeding in lane. <laughs> Especially when Shaco comes and ganks because he kept her there. Fantastic. Katarina, probably not going to be able to escape from this. 
Oh, nice leap back in with the flash there, Needling. Very aggressive, and it pays off. They pick up the kill on Katarina. And Katarina's early advantage completely gone. Neely able to push up this lane really fast so she can go be heal up and be ready for the return of Jarvin, the history teacher here to teach South Korea a lesson about messing with China. And don't fight a land war in Asia. But no, he's not actually going to do anything. He, she, he is, however, going to prevent her from pushing out the lane rather significantly and getting the advantage of getting that lane pushed and going B. Kateri on our way back with the build towards Warmog started. I'm noticing more and more Katarina players just rushing a Warmogs. Neely coming back with Tear. Very nice choice on a Neely always. Source Shoes. Cho being Cho Gath. Nom 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 nom. Gentleman Cho, of course, the only skin able to be used in the world when you're playing Cho because it is by far the most fantastic. But that's not what we're interested in. It's mid lane time. Hey, look what Katarina's doing. She's warding up in a position that sees the rays in the area. I like to see. She is walking into range of ward. Blue team will see her coming. Neely not far behind. Also spotted by the ward. They are closer to the tower here for blue. But Neely can't win the close-up fight against Katarina. She's not able to just go into that bush. Uh, to, uh, the lantern from uh, Thresh bringing her right into the fight and right back out again as both Neely and Shaco are there to fight in the bot lane. Jarvan and Poppy busy up top, but no, oh, a lot of damage on Shaco who is a little out of position. Gonna get a Thresh for it. And then the mids are gonna go back mid. Very good move for both of them to support that bot lane and get involved in that fight. That's the mobility that I'm talking about that mid lane needs. And now they're gonna go back to the farming. And Neely is going to take as much advantage as she can of Katarina being at half health. Get her so low that if she ults in, you instantly kill her. She won't ult in on you. Go tip. Players tend to play slightly more scared when they're low. Now the higher elo they are, or the higher skilled they are, more accurately, the more likely they are know to exactly their limits. Katarina right here could probably burst her under the tower, uh, neatly under the tower, and live. A lower elo player would be more apt to just hide in the tower. If you're good at dodging the skill shots, Neely's not that big of a threat, but Kat doesn't seem to have a lot of success with that. Cho'Gath getting ganked up a little here by, uh... Uh, Shaco, but Jarvin's here to help. It's gonna be a free kill on Poppy, perhaps. Poppy taking too much damage to really survive. Jarvin as well, though. The Feast going down to give Cho the kill. Katarina finally going B from... Oh, Minion just barely saving Katarina from a little annoyance. Shaco did pick up the kill on Jarvin, but that's irrelevant because we're talking about mid. Now, Katarina's B, so what should Team South Korea be doing? Well, exactly what they are doing. They are pushing up this tower, and they're getting as much pressure on here, so the next time Katarina roams, she can kill the tower. Oh, hey, look, she's gonna go take raids because her minions are doing the damage, or she's ganking top. One of the two. Either way, I like it. This mobility, and the pressure. She's pressuring mid lane, forcing Katarina to go there. Oh, Cho. Cho, you're in trouble. You're in trouble, Cho. Oh, Shaco's in trouble too, but you're in more. Or not. Maybe Neely. Oh, Neely with a nice... Oh, you gotta change forms there. Yes, that's it! Very nice play from Team South Korea. Katarina, once again, doing exactly what a mid should be doing. Neely's top, too late to help. Push the tower. Seeing a lot of good examples here. The last game had some poor examples in that Ari, but this game, very excellent examples of what a mid should be doing. Both of them making very good decisions. Fresh dying once again in the bot lane, and Misfortune as well. Dragon's there to make some trouble, but no one cares because it's not mid. And Neely pushing her off the tower finally. Taking a lot of tower damage for getting that gank up top, though. The significant tower damage advantage for the red team, who are now taking the dragon control, because bot has lost the tower. She's going to spell trouble for Nid Mid, because she's going to have some trouble. And I was rather redundant there, I didn't really explain that. But without that bot lane pressure and the map control it gives, she is more vulnerable than before. Example, right here. 
<laughs> her spirit is just doing so much damage. Almost ready to finish her Archangel Staff. Oh, Thresh out of position. Probably going to die here. Katarina is coming. She may be able to pick up a kill off of it if they don't back out, and they wisely back out. Very nicely done, both teams, with the exception of Thresh getting caught out of position, but he did get wards up in a nice place. A little redundant place, but nice. Poppy and Cho looking to have a little date in the jungle. Little alone, Cho has a thing for Yordles. They taste delicious. Thresh dying. Sure dodge that down. There. Lantern, can't click it, can't mouse over it. Nope, the Lux Dolt. He has a lot of damage on Katarina. Shaco Ghost is gonna die, but Katarina gets away. Only Jarvan got killed there. Nice escape from Katarina, but that was a good play by the blue team, getting all of their team together for there for that. The crowd control sticking them in the Lux Dolt was very effective. And hey, look what they're doing. They're pressuring the tower since they've got the advantage. And they're taking Dragon. Cho coming to stop Needle from taking the tower. That's fine, because they'll take a dragon. Really tying Cho up, keeping him from doing anything about it. Oh, being very aggressive here. We may see either Needly or Cho die. Needly very good on the escape there. Getting a little unnecessarily aggressive there. Thought she could take down Cho, but instead almost died herself when Thresh and Katarina both showed up. Tower diving three people when you're alone is not... Always safe, but very good escape their capability from Needly. I'm liking what Needly is doing. She's 302 to Katarina's 111. She's only 10 farm behind, so there's gonna be about equal in gold. Well, maybe slight advantage to Katarina because that first blood bonus. Let's have a look. 4800 to 4300. Hey, Needly actually has the advantage there. Those extra kills paying off loads of money. But her tower's gonna go down. She just went B, and three of red was there to kill it. That's gonna reduce her ability to push out and be aggressive on the enemy tower. Takes away some of her map control and presence. Oh, Lux dying instantly to the full. Oh, nice area effect damage from the blue team to push them out of there. Immediately getting caught by the tanky Joe. Caitlyn in a nice flanking position, but vulnerable as a result. But blue team is too low to deal with it. Now this is the point in the game where we're moving away from the laning phase. We've talked plenty about the laning phase for mid. What happens in mid to late game? We're at the roaming phase. Oh, very nice spear needle. Oh, and that's going to be a kill on show, but a death for needle as well. Jarvan being a little unnecessary there. Uh, perhaps accidentally going to that uh, tossed sword. Lag thing, whatever he tosses. Katarina wanting to get a kill here, and it looks like she's going to. Misfortune, having already used her ult, unable to really uh, assist there. <laughs> wow, Poppy. Wow, okay. Very nice job killing the Jarvan there. I'm sure you died for it, but if you weren't Poppy, you would have just died, so that works out very nicely. Alright, we see Katarina with the War Mogs, and is she building anything else? Sork Treads, and more health. Looks like she's building towards the Leandres, as most cats do. And the opposite cat, with the C this time, because it's Needly, has Needlessly Large. Hasn't finished off an Archangel Staff, is still stacking up that tier of the Goddess. Sorcerer's Shoes, the Blasting Wand for the uh, Archangel, and Amplifying Tome for the little AP. She's up to 204 AP to Katarina's 31, but Katarina with 2600 hit points and Needle's 1360. Double Needle's health. Less than, uh, about, uh, 20% of her damage. From AP, anyways. Katarina's base damage is pretty good. That's why seeing a lot of people go just tankiness on her. This fortune might get caught here. Or oh, <laughs> or Katarina might, and then just not care because she's got so much health. Can't mouse over the lantern, or I'm going to crash. Oh, that spear still so much damage against anyone it hits. Down goes Thresh. 
missed spear from Needly there, but they're still running away. They don't have the ability to fight. Cho meeting up with them. Blue team a little split off, two still bot. They might have a three on three here if they decide to fight it. Dragon may be up soon. There's a lot of attention going here. I didn't take note of the timer on that. But it's been a while. It should be up soon. I wish uh, this had the dragon timers. Is there a option for that? Timers? No? No timers button? Where are my timers button, right? You should add that to spectator mode. So I don't have to pay attention. Is fortune all the way in the red cape? And down she goes. Feeding a kill to Katarina. Wonder why she was there? Don't really know. Did she just get a kill? Oh, Caitlyn. She, oh, yeah, that's why she was there. She got a kill on Caitlyn. I guess that's uh, worth it. Just for. Red team's turret has been destroyed. Elite finally getting that pressure on mid to kill the mid tower. And the bot tower dying to minions while they were busy fighting. And killing Lux. So, as I was saying, mid lane, what is their role in the mid gang here? Well, it's much like it was before. Do damage to really turn team fights around by being very mobile and getting into the positions they need to be in. In this situation, they both lost the mid towers, so uh, the inner towers are a lot easier to defend, but a lot more valuable. We're seeing a lot more team action going on, so they've taken their point in the team, either in Katarina's case to be tanky DPS, or in Nidalee's case to be a sniper, do lots of damage. The book is very easily caught by Jarvan and Katarina. But I'm following the Nidalee this game a little more. I like what she's been doing here. She's been playing pretty fantastically. Her bot lane has not been doing well, though, and that's why this game is going as it is. Bot lane is way behind in this. Pop was behind as well, but that's a poppy lane for you. Thresh pulling Lux out of position. Could be a lot of trouble for her there, but hey! Cho getting caught with the snare. Maybe another spear here. Nope, no more spear. Red going for the dragon. Very nice call. We're seeing red just barely head and go, but it's going to get a little nicer here when they take the dragon. No vision for the blue team. Let's switch over to blue camera. No idea at all. The team not really aware of where most of blue team is. And I need some water. I'm getting tired. So I'm going to tab over and look at the chat while we're in this mid-game period and see if anyone has any questions at this point. So if you have a question, post it up in the live stream chat and I'll have a look at it. That's right. Ask away. So I have something to talk about for the next couple minutes as we progress into the later mid-game. Everyone's just farming up at this point, trying to keep map control so they know where everyone is and massing up when it is appropriate. It's a little hard to describe when it is appropriate to mass up, when it is appropriate to do certain things in the mid-game, because mid-game is very dependent on the map situation, who's involved, and etc. like that. Right now we see red team massing up, so blue team's gonna have to quickly react in the mid lane. Caitlyn split pushing up top, gonna be vulnerable to uh, a gank up there, but she's way ahead of Poppy, maybe old fighter. If Poppy bans lanes and come for a gank in mid against that team, there could be a lot of trouble there, but Caitlyn's showing up late, if she gets there anywhere near in time, she's going to have basically the perfect initiate. No matter what happens to us with her team, she'll be in the back and able to poke at you. A lot of damage going down on the Thresh. Looks like Thresh is going to die here. Poppy going right in to finish it off. Taking another 99% slow, because why not? Shaco goes dying very quickly for no reason. Looks like Jarvan's going to get caught here and die. Leaving just three on the red team. Katarina sneaking up behind. She'll be able to pick up some kills because she is very tanky. Immediately taken down by Cho'Gath. Very nice feast there. Katarina finishing off Shaco. And Miss Fortune caught out of position. She's all alone. Lux on the wrong side of the wall to help her. Caitlyn and Katarina quickly making work of her. And Poppy's just caught out of position. Was chasing off the Cho by herself. Now, let's have a look at what happened in this fight. It's two, 
Too far back. Too far back, Fox. There we go. Alright. So what I want to pay attention to is what Poppy did here. So, we have Shaco Ghost being aggressive here, but everyone else is turning around to go this way, with the exception of Shaco apparently. Kill the Jarvan. Shaco took a bit of damage there, getting him nice and low to half health. Poppy trying to get on this Caitlyn, but Caitlyn's too far in the back to really catch it. So Poppy goes for Cho. No one else follows Poppy. Lux gets stopped by a trap and starts going the other way because Caitlyn's there. Misfortune was being aggressive, and Shaco had gotten killed by Katarina. Let's look at that once more. So Poppy went off on her own. Everyone stopped following Poppy. Neely had gotten picked off in the back. Well, in the front by Cho got here with all that nice, nice burst. And Katarina coming up behind. Lux walking into the trap. Not really her fault there, but Misfortune just kept going in on Caitlyn. Surrounded, and they all got cut out of position. Katarina doing a nice job of coming up from behind to enable that. And Poppy just going off on her own did not help her team at all there. So it was at first very, very nice for the blue team. They had a position on a three on five there, but then they got split off and put, picked apart bit by bit. Not the ideal situation. So Red's going to take a free tower here because there's literally no way to stop them. Blue team's turret has been destroyed. I'm going to stop saying the word literally as much as I can. Alright, checking questions. There have been no questions asked, so I guess no one has any questions about how it works or what they should be doing or anything like that. Let's go ahead and turn manual camera back to where it should be. Close that up for a minute. Have a nice view of Cho'Gath going be in the bush. Oh yeah, hi Cho. Hello. Goodbye. Okay. Back to the regular view here, because why not? Blue team clearing traps with Lux as the trap magnet. Maybe taking herself a blue buff. Baron warded up quite nicely here. Giving this forewarning. Looks like they want to make a move on it. This is a good chance for them to come back. He's taking out this top tower, getting that lane to push up. Gives them some position. They catch someone out of position on the red team. Or vice versa, get caught out of position here. Caitlyn trying to push up mid. He seems to have to react to this. Everyone but Shaco coming down. Shaco counter pushing. Looks like he's trying to do a base raid. Poppy taking a lot of damage there. Lux almost dead. Getting chased here, but is able to survive. Katarina now on her own. Oh, Lux getting killed because she didn't leave far enough. Lee's gonna try to. Oh, almost poking Thresh to death. Jarvan stopping Shaco from taking more than one tower. And Red Team just pushing harder into this base. Fresh finally dying to Misfortune. Blue Team losing the inhibitor and therefore any advantage they may have had. Lux is dead. Thresh is dead. Just the supports. Jarvan pushing out the top lane so it was an advantage for the Blue Team in the bot fight there. With one of the opponents missing. I'm oh, sorry, Shaco is dead too, never mind. It was a 3v4. Well, 3v3, really. Poppy cut out of position here. Can she get away? Caught by a trap. She's not gonna get out. Caitlyn may get caught in exchange though, but Katarina is certainly gonna take a kill for it. She may be able to finish Misfortune too. Chased off by Nili at the last moment, but Katarina with those free kills, very well off. She's now 6 1 6 to Nili's 4 2 6. Doing a nice job of using that tankiness and good positioning to come up and pick up some kills. Lux trying to snare Chip. Just barely missing. So we've seen some pretty good play from both mid laners right here. Uh, in mid game, the mid is uh, generally there to put out damage and change team fights, keep that mobility and map pressure. They fall off from being the only one doing that as the whole team moves into doing that. And until late game, that basically stands their role. They're just, I hate to say it, but really an average member of the team. They just don't really do anything that anyone else does is this mid-game point. The support really being the only unique one. Uh, AD carry as well, in their own way. Now, I would like to point the fact to ward coverage right here. Let's look at Blue's vision. Let's look at Red's vision. Now, Red has four wards to Blue's two, but they're all in the same spot around Baron. 
But their advantage comes from the minions' map control. They have a lot of vision on lanes. They can see if someone's going to defend. And so they have the opportunity to fight it. Fair enough. They go way out of place there, but so does Jarvan. Oh, Caitlyn gets caught and dies! This may be an opportunity for the blue team to make a comeback here. Katarina is going to be able to put down Dan, but is quickly stunned out of her ult. Cho'Gath cut out of position and killed Fresh, the next to die here shortly. Down he goes. Poppy staying on Katarina, but that's a dangerous thing to do. Jarvan, you're too low to stay in. Oh, Jarvan goes down as well. Four for none for the blue team. Katarina may pick up a kill here. Lux is pretty squishy, but Poppy and Lux together... Kind of dangerous. Needley's just around the corner. If she can get a spear off, there goes the spear, and there goes the kill. Very nicely aimed spear by Needley there. They have an opportunity to push up objectives, or take towers, or take that Baron buff. Someone's going to have to defend mid lane against the super minions, obviously. But five, an ace for no deaths is a fantastic situation. They're not going to be able to take Baron here. Not enough people there to actually do the damage to it. But that was a good play on the blue team. Equalizing the gold lead. They've got a three kill advantage. For one tower and one inhibitor disadvantage. Shaco may get caught here by Caitlyn if she can catch up. She's gonna stop. This inhibitor really being the game changing aspect there. Taking an inhibitor whenever you can, because as soon as you have a fight like that, red team or sorry, blue team aced the red team and got nothing for it except to defend and of course, you know, five kills. They didn't take Dragon, they didn't take Baron, they didn't take any towers, they didn't really get to push up lanes that much. They didn't get to a single tower damage at all from the ace there. All because inhibitor is really strong to take early. Or really at any point in the game. But everyone's well aware of that. At this point, I should be talking a bit about the mid lane, but there's really not much to say here. We're seeing strong play from both players, but at this point, it's a team phase more so than the solo laning. So what lane you're in is less important than how you perform with your team. Katarina getting a little caught by Poppy here. Poppy being dragged into a wall by Thresh Rude. Poppy, very aggressive here. Once again, separated from her team, going aggressively onto them. Katarina going B here gives an opportunity for the blue team to initiate. Of course, they don't know that she's going B, but they don't see her, which could actually cause them more pause than if they did see her. Blue also being up. Blue team's inhibitor is respawning soon. That's a beautiful phrase to hear if you're the blue team. That inhibitor is going to help you out a lot. Lux having to flash away from Cho. Needly doing still tons of damage with those spears. Death cap, tier. No Archangel staff, she's just still stacking tier. She sell it and restart. No bonus mana on it. I'm confused. Neely, what are you doing? Oh, I just can't see the mana. Okay, it must be full. Oh, Thresh once again caught. Very squishy member of the team as the support. Katarina ulting under the tower, taking a lot of damage, and the Luxel finishes her off! Thresh going in for Neely to try to finish her off, but he's not got the damage by himself. He's going to die here as well. And another fantastic team fight for the blue team, losing two for an ace. Poppy wanting to take Baron, but Poppy, you have no health, and the rest of the team is kind of low too. Poppy, you, 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 you have... You have 250 hit points. Baron does more than that over the course of the Blue fight. Blue team losing a turret bot despite having won the team fight because minions pushing. Both teams pinging up Baron. Poppy having not Don B, still very low health. She's going to be a late beer and not going to have that presence at Baron that they might have had otherwise, but getting the farm at least. Then they'll help her buy perhaps slightly bigger items. Lux being Lux. Hello, Lux. He leaves the one I wanted to go to. We'll have a look at Katarina. Katarina with the Warmogs, the level 3 home guard sorcerer shoes, the Leandries, and of course, Abyssal Sucker. All very strong items when you're a Katarina. Cho'Gath, Warmogs, Rod of Ages, Rylai's very healthy build. Uh, not so much the armor, only 93 base armor. Megatron Cloak building up, perhaps into a Guardian Angel or maybe an Abyssal Scepter. 
A little hard to say. Both of them good options on Cho'Gath. With the Abyssal Scepter already on Katarina, I would lean more towards expecting to see a Guardian Angel on him. Cage's lucky pick. They're waiting to be built into something. Or replaced, for that matter. Red team massing up in the mid lane, looking to defend against blue team's similar mass. Shaco's foot pushing out and bot. Misfortune is on her way for the mid fight. But it's going to be five on three initially. They're going to have to disengage here very quickly. But hey, disengage is what Nidalee is good at. Not unless she can disengage fantastically by herself. But she's got that spear to throw back at anyone chasing. Oh, yeah. Almost half of Caitlyn's health in one spear. So very much damage from that. Must not mouse over Fresh Lantern. Shaco about to get ganked by the entire red team here. Red team's has been destroyed. Cho missing the pop-up. Oh, nice to see Shaco, but you're still in the middle of the team. Can you get out in time? Yes, you can. Very nicely done, Shaco. The rest of your team is going for Dr Baron. You might want to get there as soon as you can because red is coming too. It's already at half health. Caitlyn, are you going to be able to steal this? Oh, Caitlyn spotted with the ward. Hit by the Lux ult. She's at half health. She is shooting the Lux right back for it. Who's going to get the Baron? Red team stole the Baron. Very nicely done. Jarvan with that smite there. But you're going to die for it. Your team is going to die for it. Caitlyn doing no damage before she dies there. Misfortune picking up the kills on everyone. Literally everyone on the team dying for the red. That dragon buff completely gone. They got the gold from it, but nothing else. All of blue is alive. Their inhibitor is alive, so they're able to push this out. They've got an opportunity here to take their own inhibitor or maybe even a nexus tower in the 25 seconds they have before the blue team is back up. Immediately just tanking it because minions are too slow. They gotta get this tower down as fast as they can. They have to push so fast. Red is pushing up the top lane with minions there. They're gonna start getting some damage on the tower. Blue is going to have to hurry here, take the inhib before red team can get respawn and then push out that top lane so they don't lose the tower for nothing. Losing that Baron buff slowed them down. If that Baron buff had gone to blue team, oh my goodness, they could have kept pushing there because that health and mana regen for Poppy would have kept her in the fight. Oh, this top tower is still going to go down for the blue team. They're not going to get there in time at all. A little bit of a blessing for the red team there. Blue managing to pick up the enemy blue buff. Very nice play from the blue team. They're really coming together in these team fights in the late game. 3k golden advantage now. Not a significant lead, but they did take the inhibitor. It's going to give them an advantage. Red team's going to have to push down the opposing inhibitor to try to even this out, or they're going to be in a bad situation the rest of this game. The longer they take to push that out, the shorter the game gets. Blue with the decisive advantage at the moment. Let's see. Blue team, what do you have going top? Blue with... Uh, not really an advantage pushing up the top lane. This could go either way here. I think it's actually going to start pushing for the... It'll push slightly in favor of the blue team here. That actually works out fairly nicely to have that close AO push because then by the time it does actually start getting going, you're going to have a huge minion wave. So the pressure to bot tower is now the priority. Miss Fortune can go ahead and start pushing it out while the rest of the team takes the dragon. Red team coming to interfere with it. They know it's going on. They're going for it. And they're not going to do anything but eat a spear in the bush. Cho's going to try to land something. Poppy, where are you going? Huh. Lux ult hitting Thresh. Lots of damage. Poppy in the middle of everyone. Knocking Caitlyn. Trying to get her out of this fight. Must not mouse over Thresh. Oh, everyone caught by the Misfortune ult. So much damage from Tons of damage. Caitlyn, uh, Katarina Oldson trying to kill Misfortune. But it's just not enough when you're in the middle of five of the enemy team. This is going to be a fantastic situation for the blue team. They've got two kills. Cho, very, very low. Has no chance to help his teammates at all. The spear not quite getting in range. But Poppy's just going to go right in under the tower. Because, hey, Poppy, you're very tanky. Very nicely done there. Slowing them down enough for Jarvan to die as well. They're going to be able to take Nexus Towers here. This tower is going to die so very quickly. This is going to be GG for the blue team right here. Caitlyn uh, and Katarina aren't going to respawn in time to save it. Fresh dying very quickly. Cho trying to pick up a kill here on Misfortune. 
but the feast just wasn't enough, and he's getting stunned and prevented from going back to heal in time. He's gonna die too, right before the Nexus goes down. Very nice late game team play by the blue team, winning those team fights consistently. That Misfortune ult so powerful in that last fight when they all got tied up by the Jarvan ult. The ending with a 7k gold advantage, 9 towers of 7, and a 15 kill lead. Very nice comeback by the blue team. Red had a strong advantage once they took that inhibitor. But the important thing we were talking about today was mids. That was very good for both mid players. There was a lot to learn from that match. Anyone watching, hopefully you have some improvement in your mid plane just by watching those core, core ideals as a mid player. Those are, and I will repeat this again and again throughout this episode, which is actually wrapping up here soon. But the core ideals you need to pay in mind when you are the mid lane is map control, pressure, and ganking. Those are kind of that tri-force of power, of strength for the mid lane. You, if you're mobile and your opponent is playing defensive, go gank another lane. Go over there and kill them. If your opponent is being aggressive and pushing up on you, get your jungler again and get a gank on them when they're out of position. Then push up and go gank someone else. If they're leaving to gank somewhere else, either follow them and turn it into a team fight or take their tower while they're gone. Those are the keys to playing mid, and that's really what you need to be paying attention. I'm going to open up the chat once more to any questions. Hello, any questions at all about mid lane before I wrap up this episode? While I wait on the questions to roll in, I'd like to remind everyone that I am Philibuster Fox, and this is the 15th episode, I believe, of this show. It happens every night at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern time, at twitch.tv slash filibusterfox. I do thank everyone who is a viewer. I do appreciate the views. It encourages me to continue doing it because me talking to myself for an hour, not that great a thing to do. But anyone who does improve from this, please give me your feedback, comment, like the videos on the stream, YouTube, whatever you like to do. So I've got a question coming in here from the chat. Uh, what lane is ideal... Okay, well, a couple questions here. I'll start with the first one. Who's your favorite mid? My favorite mid right now is actually Evelyn. Despite the nerf she received recently, I've been having a lot of fun playing Evelyn recently. Just the sheer mobility she has to get around, how fast she can push up a lane, she hits really the key points of that mid. You can push up very quickly and pressure a tower if the opponent leaves and you don't want to follow, or if you kill them and you know you just want to take their tower instead of ganking somewhere else. You're very fast, can get around the map quickly and unexpectedly, forcing them to place the pink wards more so than standard sight wards. You can have more options in how you gank. You can lane gank very easily as the mid laner if you're Evelyn. And that ult, so very good for initiating, give you tons of tankiness to go in with. Now the changes to the ult make it a much less good finisher move, which I used to love doing as. Oh, you're low under tower? Let me just stay out of range of the tower and just poke you with my ult and look, you're dead. Okay, so that's my favorite mid right now. Following that would probably be Cho'Gath. I'm always a big fan of Cho'Gath. Gentleman Cho walking around with tankiness and damage to spare. This is cooldown reduction Cho and tanky Cho. Very nice combination there. You just build up that CDR, that tank, and you just bully whoever you're against. My mid Cho is very dependent on the blue buff because that blue buff enables me to keep that bullying going. I'm less mobile as the Cho, not quite as fast, no movement powers at all to work with to get around the map more quickly. So I like to be very aggressive with my pushing, and I like to bully my opponent, keep them from getting any farm, keep them from leaving the lane. I tend to lock them down more so than like Evelyn, who tends to go around. My mid opponents is my Evelyn tend to actually get more fed than my other mid lanes, because I'm so busy getting fed everywhere else that she's just getting to farm. All right. Uh, I did not get your questions from earlier, Miami. So uh, which lane is ideal for mid to gank? Should they have the opportunity? if both top and bottom can use a gank. In my opinion, getting the ganks in bot lane is always the most important lane to gank, either as a jungler or a mid. That bot 80 carry is really the key to the late game of a, ma late game of a match. Your top lane, if they're in a bad situation, they could use the gank to get them ahead or to catch them up. That's always a good thing. But if equal terms are basically no kills in any lanes, both lanes are doing about the same, that bot lane needs the attention more than the top lane. Top lane is designed to be an independent lane. Most of the champions go up there are meant to not get that much help. The jungler can help them occasionally, the mid can help them occasionally, but usually they're up there alone while the rest of the team fights down in bot lane. Bot lane is the crux of the early game. That AD carry 
if you get the, your AD carry ahead so they can bully the other AD carry, zone them out, and get farm for them, their opponent, or quickly take that tower and start the roaming phase early if that's your team comp's preference, that bot lane is the key to the max late game. If your AD carry is winning, you are winning. Usually. I did play a match yesterday where an Ezreal went like 12-3 and three in the early game, but my Shyvana top just never died. Literally never died. Ezreal's ult took off, you know, 5% of my health, and he was super fed and building nothing but damage, so in teamfights, I just go in on him. That's irrelevant. AD carries are the most influential to winning the late game because you get that damage built, and if they can stay out of position, in, in the correct position, so that they're not killed early in the team fights, you can pr correctly peel for them, that's how you win the team fights, and that's how you win the game. The AD carries are the key for that, so ganking the bot lane is the most important. Yes, that was. He asked if that was the game I played with him, and yes, it was. But AD carries having the advantage is the most likely way for your team to win the game. Any other questions from the chat today? Give it a moment here. Once again, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, twitch.tv slash filibusterfox. You can either watch the archives at youtube.com slash filibusterfox or twitch.tv slash filibusterfox. They're available on both sites. If you see audio sync issues on YouTube, watch the Twitch version because sometimes there's a processing error when it transfers over. All right. Uh, how do I feel about the Warmogs meta? Warmogs right now. I used to love multi-stacking Warmogs, especially when playing Mundo. Warmogs right now is very, very strong because Black Cleaver invalidates a lot of armor builds. Armor is much less effective than it used to be. Magic Resist, much less effective than it used to be because it changes this percentage penetration and how penetration works with the armor and Magic Resist. You're going to get more effective health out of building health than you will out of building armor and, and uh, Magic Resist. Now, armor and Magic Resist is always nice to have because it helps a lot for that first 100, 150 that you get. But health is really the big thing right now. Warmogs, of course, gives you not only health, but it gives you that health regen so you can sustain a little better. Uh, Warmogs, of course, for everyone, not just Cat in particular. I was surprised to actually see the surgeons in Warmogs and Katarina lately, but it's, it makes a lot of sense for her. She's a very high-risk, high-reward champion, and if you've got that tankiness to go in and stay in the middle of their team while you ult, you'll be a lot better off than if you just build pure damage and just instantly die if you try to do something. But Warmog's meta, how do I feel about it? As in, what are my personal opinions? Do I like it? Do I hate it? Or why is it a thing? Or can you be more specific on that question? While he types his response to that, I am just going to say, I hope if anyone has any more questions about mid lane and its role in the meta, please, or in the team comps and that are common to the meta, rather, Please feel free to comment questions later if you're not in the chat right now, and I'll answer as best as I can on YouTube. Of course, tune in next time tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Do I like it? I've always been a big, big fan of Warmogs. Uh, I do love building it. Do I like seeing it on everyone? No, not really. Uh, I do like a fast-paced game, especially if I'm spectating it. Warmogs tends to draw out the team fights a little more. It kind of requires you to do something and right now with the current season three items and the meta that's going on you're not seeing a lot of variety in builds you see a lot of war mogs you see a lot of uh, static shifts on 80 carries you see a lot of black cleavers on the ap 80 bruisers and of course you see leandries on basically everyone who's an ap at all uh so you see a very limited selection of items and that's kind of counter to what Riot was intending with the Season 3 items. They wanted to give more options, they wanted to create a little more variety so that, for example, AD carries could build lots of different item types, and they actually, how it is right now, uh, and the penetration the way it is, is making a lot of the tanky items not useful, and it's leaning towards the health and the Warmogs route. So, do I like it? No, not really. But I don't really dislike it. I'm just, it's how it is right now. Uh, I certainly don't mind it as much as I mind the extreme heavy focus on invading towards the end of Season 2. But I hope that answers your question. Alright everyone, that's it for the questions for today. Once again, tune in every night, 9pm Pacific, midnight Eastern, at twitch.tv slash filibusterfox. And I'll see you tomorrow.